and we are live welcome back to the map stream the stream where i draw a map using design software the reason i use design software is i can uh, point and click instead of actually having to draw which is nice so we are going to draw some stuff first thing i'm going to do is this is bothering me i'm going to put it up against the wall like that yeah so we're gonna make some big old doors. We gotta figure out how to communicate doors uh, with this medium. Just gonna be maybe just like a fuck off big rectangle like that. They are stupid large. And we can make sure the doors are correctly sized. Yeah, I'm hoping the lo-fi music will help the fact that I am basically in a meditative state while I do this. So right now I'm just making rectangles. Hold on. My friend sent me a funny gif. I must stop everything I'm doing. It's very funny and it will make zero sense if I show it to you, chat. So I'm gonna just keep it to myself. All right, so we got 2.8 thickness. Doot. There we go. I'm gonna close my door too. But yeah, feel free to holler at me in chat. If any of you are working on any RPG projects or any art kind of stuff, I definitely want to hear about it while I get to shwerking on this uh, vector map. Those of you who are wondering in chat, this program is called Affinity Designer. It's basically Photoshop, except for it only costs $40. So if you are looking to uh, <clears throat> make stuff for cheap and not spend infinity money forever, uh, highly recommend. Sort of making random building shapes here. I kind of want to make one that like skirts around the back. And then I think in the future I might um, add some stuff into the larger buildings to sort of like indicate that they are in fact amalgamations of smaller buildings and not titanically huge constructions but right now we're more focused on getting a visually pleasing background kind of set up this sort of dilapidated janky style I also kind of want to see what happens if I change all the buildings stroke to like a painting type situation but I'm like 99% confident that that will crash this program. When in doubt, fill the entire space. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, we're almost there. Already. 
except for this huge corner over here that needs to be fixed. I like I like this. Yeah. Why is it like that? Who knows? I just like long alleyways and aesthetic. So I don't know how well chat can be seen without a background behind it. So I think we're gonna change gears here and throw a box behind that real quick. Uh, color source. That's not what I want. Let's try that again. Color source, and let's do a new color source. Yo, what's up, dude? It's Noah, right? Yeah, man, I'm chilling. I'm just working on this map. I thought this was gonna be. I thought I was gonna bust this out in an hour, and it's taking like multiple multiple streams at this point what are you up to man what are you doing i have not used inkmate now i'm using affinity uh designer because that's the program i use for graphic design at work so i feel more comfortable with it Dude, I feel that. Yeah, I checked it out a little while ago. It looks pretty cool. Does it have like a city building feature? Um, also, my other question, I guess, for Inkmate is like, can I use the maps for commercial products? Because I'm eventually going to use some form of this for a commercial product. janky shape yeah that would be my main question with inkmate is whether or not I can uh, use the art interesting interesting how uh, is there are, are, is, the aesthetic of the city will matter to me because the city you're looking at right now was built by undead after the apocalypse. So it has to look janky. Like it can't just look like a fantasy city. Uh, which is not to say that I'm doing a particularly good job of accomplishing that look on my own right now, but it's not done yet. So I'll say that in my defense. Yeah, I am super jealous of Nerdlandia and the ridiculous amount of art uh, talent they have. Yeah, sure. Uh, one second. Uh, yeah, 
I don't see anything from you. Try again. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let me add a window capture here. So this is what Noah is showing me. Yeah, it's pretty dope. I'm painting something green now. Yeah, so it's got like city tiles and stuff. That's pretty cool. That seems dope. I'm definitely uh, fully committed to this thing I am doing now, so I'll have to check that out. Next time I make a map, take a look at it. All right. Um, so we're going to do a little stall shape here. It's going to have to be like a one thickness, I think. I think we might do some shape combining. It's going to be like that. Yeah, that sounds good to me. I'm also like, um, I'm also wondering about like color palettes and stuff. I don't know if it has that, but that being said, color palette is less of an issue because I can always export the map and then use Photoshop to accomplish the uh, color palette I'm looking at. And I'm, I'm all about working smarter, not harder. So it's definitely gonna be something to look into. I don't want to be. I want to be super sure on the uh, legality aspect, though. All right, that's basically like a stall. I don't know. We'll throw a gigantic caveat. Well, so with Cyberpunk, what I found is that. Um, you basically want to not uh, try to render everything. Basically, like, um, a good cyberpunk map is, like, these are the rough regions of this, like, 10-mile-across mega-sprawl city. And here's a list of some of the stuff you can find, but it's so ridiculously gigantic and overbuilt that you don't have to stat everything else out. Here's all the market stalls coming into the city. Now we can just go fucking bananas with these because they are everywhere. Fill out this whole area. So basically like what the deal is here Yeah, uh, I'm actually using keyboard and mouse right now. I do not have a tablet pen. And the program I'm using has very powerful stabilizing and alignment tools, which allowed me, which allows me to do what it is I want to do. Uh, yeah, if I did not have that, I would not be making no, uh, no kind of graphics. 
Uh, I will say also that I'm a I'm a huge I'm a gigantic fanboy for Affinity. Uh, the program I'm using, it's like forty bucks, period. Uh, so definitely worth definitely worth if you're doing any kind of graphic work at all. But if I, I mean honestly, if you're not already doing graphic stuff for like your day job, there's really no reason to get software like this. You're definitely way better off using a uh, Inkscape. I think I think you're making the right choice. Is what I'm telling you. Yeah, that looks good. Well, that's kind of like, I don't think tilt is the right maneuver here. Let me skew it a little bit. Yeah, there we go. It's a little bit. Of graphical representation here. So I was actually talking to somebody else who came out from the last stream uh, who basically said that I should do what Inkscape does and just have a city tile that is, like, repeatable. So you can um, – so I can just, like, slap it down. Dude, that's dope. <laughs> Hell yeah, you did. Making Donald Trump's hair pink. That's awesome. But yeah, she was saying just to make a repeatable city tile that I can use basically like a paint filler. So I just draw the shape of the city and then fill out the tile. Fill it out with tile. Which is a great idea. But that, I, I did not do that at the start of this. And it's too late now. Five bucks a month for Inkscape? Damn, son. And I'm not trying to pay no subscription fees. I'll just work super hard for no reason. Thanks, man. And now that I've uh, now that I've made this beautiful map, I'm going to obscure it with text <laughs> so that the players know where the hell they're going. But the map part is done, so that's good. And we still got 42 minutes on the clock, so there's plenty of time for uh, fixing stuff, making it look nice. We might even have to go over to Photoshop to do some editing, but uh, we can get rid of the pencil sketch layer. Yeah, they showed me the map. It was... Uh, very very it was amazing to look at and i was like fuck <laughs> they're way better at this than i am <laughs> all right so it's a little stark right now it's a little black and white so i wonder if i can fix that actually by doing something wacky so i'm gonna move this curve all the way to the bottom And not do it the hard way. Oh man, that's a lot of curves. Okay. And then we're going to add a uh, pixel layer inside of the curve. And then we are going to go over to pixel manipulation mode. Yeah, I've spent like three hours total on this map, I think. Uh, oh, yeah, I bet. What's the uh, what's the triangle they always said? It's like good, fast, and cheap. Right, let me check the Discord again. Yo, that looks great, man. Did you make that with Inkscape? That looks awesome. That's super good. Dude, it's it's fucking amazing how much free technology Dungeon Masters have access to. Like, when I started playing this game, you had graph paper. Like, that was the most advanced technology that I had. <laughs> uh. I 
this. We're gonna. Oh no. Oh no. This is real bad. Don't like this. Okay, so I think the problem is it's black. Also, the curve isn't closed, which is causing some issues over here. So we're just gonna close the curve, hopefully. This is the issue with um, drawing in vectors, is that they can get real fiddly. Beige instead of gray. Yeah, that sounds right. I also think if I um, if I have all the other curves fill, uh, then they'll pop as white, and then the black will be relegated to the quote-unquote alleys and roads. So we're going to try that. Uh, beige. What color is beige? Beige is like a yellowish gray, right? So if I join these, eh. Where'd my paint texture go? Hey, where'd my paint, where'd you go? All right, that's okay, I can redo it, it's not a problem. We won't fuck around with the uh, little houses or the little stalls, but everything else. First, we're going to create one giant group. And it's going to be white. Like that. I think we fucked up the doors, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Color of parchment. Yeah, that sounds right. There we go. Oh man. Okay. So that looks kind of okay. Now let's try this beige of which you speak. One big erase button. <clears throat> I'm loving this sitar. Right, that's kind of yellow. You know, Noah, I like where you're going with it, but I think I am going to go with gray. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I'm going to print this on a black and white computer. And most likely, if I do a color, it's going to come out as something unpredictable, which may or may not look good. But if it's monochrome, then I know it's going to be okay. It's part of me that just wants to make it black. It's had the unfortunate side effect of making some of my buildings pop out a little bit. If I can't fix that. Oh, this one doesn't have. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's on top of the thing. Okay. Let's see. How are we going to fix this? Doot. There we go. Fixed, sort of. Oh, yeah, I see the problem. Because the uh, thing is, it's not the white is overlapping the border wall, so that's why it looks like it's sitting on top of the thing. Yeah. So uh, to explain what we're looking at here, this is one uh, district in a fortress city. These two up here are the walls. Uh, 
in this general area. And then these are just uh, border lines to other districts. So the cauldrons over here on the left, this is the meat market, which I guess we can label it now. Go ahead and do that. So this is actually the district next to the front gate of the city, which is where all of the, um, how do I say, product comes in when the undead go out scavenging. Uh, so it's kind of a center of commerce because everybody hungry, as it turns out. And who gets what food when is a matter of some uh, dispute. What if I just use the spooky font? I feel like we can do better. Ooh, I do like that orthodox herbitarian. It's a little bit too nice. We're looking for something a little Baroque, but also apocalyptic. Yeah, basically, uh, the, the pitch of the campaign is some adventurers banded together a long time ago to stop a necromancer from opening a portal to the land of the dead, the, the realm of death, the negative energy plane. And uh, they did not do so hot. And uh, the necromancer succeeded. Everyone and everything has been undead for 500 years. Uh, the entire planet is undead. There's like a weird necrotic ecology that is built up. And the, uh, this place where the players are in is Necropolis. It's a city that's built on the uh, bones of a dead titan. Uh, these walls that I talked about earlier are actually its arms. Like it fell down dead like this and the city is in here if that makes sense. So I have to make that map at some point as well. This is like a zoomed in version for my players. Well, this is no good. Uh, there we go. It's a clock tower that fell down that now is slightly problematic. So I will be running a stream version of it at some point. I want to get the campaign book done because I do eventually want to publish it, at which point I will be running streams of it. But yeah, I mean, if you want to play, I will invite you. And if and when that happens, like a year from now, if you're still interested. Right, I'm kind of curious to see what happens if I try filling these with white. I feel like it's going to be bad. Yeah, there's no way that this works. Oh, wow. Look at that. It sort of kind of worked. I think we can probably leave that for now. This is just for my players to have. Dude, this Dalek font does work. I've used this font like multiple times for multiple projects and it never lets me down. Now, the issue we have here is one of readability. Also, telling what it's pointing to is going to be an issue as well. So we can solve those one at a time. I feel like this should be at the top. So we're going to put that up there. I think an outer glow should solve the first issue. Still not very legible. Maybe an outline too.
Well, that makes it legible. But it does uh, fucking delete the stuff behind it. Is there a way to fuck with this glow some more? Yeah, there we go. I don't know. What do you think? Can can that be red? Or is it like way too confusing to look at? <laughs> nice, dude. Thanks, man. Yeah, I had, I had a really fun time playing that character. I was just like, I'm going to be a fundamentally good person who only knows how to do bad things. <laughs> that was the character. That was what I picked up from what Kat told me about him. Plus, it seemed like after watching your guys' stream, you didn't seem like um, you you didn't seem like you were going in for any like moral ambiguity with your whole aesthetic. So I didn't feel like playing. Uh... Also, I just don't like chaotic dick rogues. Like, I think it's overdone. So I definitely wanted. Whenever I play a rogue, I always try to be like the most helpful and on point rogue that I can be to try and break the stereotype. But thanks, man. I appreciate that. Kind of sad I don't get to play him anymore. Maybe he'll come back one day. Yeah, I picked up on that a little bit. That's why I hit you with the uh, let's go back to the uh, bad guy's house and take all of their fixtures and <laughs> fucking roll their corpses and stuff. But we got shut down by the cat monk. I think she played that perfectly, too giving us the business i i do like the party dynamics that was that was a super fun rpg yeah i've played games where the whole game was trying to get the party to work together and i've played other games where like it's immediate like we are ride or die without even knowing each other like we're ready to rumble Closing in on it. Yeah, it's um, it's an issue I see a lot in role-playing games, especially like games that are not being streamed. I feel like the pressure of other people watching you and the knowledge that you are, in fact, trying to make a show kind of forces you uh, kind of forces you to like actually work together whereas in a home game there is very there's actually like very little incentive to work together aside from like maybe your characters die or you don't get what you want but I mean it's make believe so people sometimes don't care about that I'm actually fine with that um, the building underneath this text is not important this is the actual building over here all right. Um, I can't remember which one of these is which. I think this is the the mafia owned bank next to the mafia owned casino. I guess I should center all this text actually. 
Donk. Is it coin purse or the coin purse? The coin purse. Yeah, it's probably the coin purse. Let's just try putting it on top. I feel like it's okay. I feel like I'm being too precious. Hans of spare parts is going to be an issue because I gotta. The clock tower's got to be there. It's a fallen down clock tower. That's like the whole thing about that building. Sort of ambiguous right now. Oh yeah. Okay, is this all the locations on the map? Oh wait, no, how could I forget? The most important building. The leaky femur. One of the most dangerous locations in all of uh, Necropolis. The most violent and deadly bar that exists where there are basically no rules and all the furniture is made of stone. The leaky femur. Yeah, let me check my other document. Oh yeah, we got the aquarium. Oh, fucking faces and things. We got a lot of stuff. The red letter. Leaky femur was actually my nickname in high school. <laughs> Press X to doubt. No, I believe it. It's actually also what the um, the tattoo above my ass says. It says Leaky Femur. Well, now I feel like an asshole if your name actually was Leaky Femur in high school. That's a dope nickname, if that's true. Faces and things. The premier uh, mob-owned undead retailer. Well, thank God. It's a place where you go to get faces and things. How much time we got? 20 minutes? Plenty of time. Plenty of time. I don't know what the fuck this is supposed to be. I guess it's this building down here. Sure. little journalistic operation. City's got to have a newspaper, right? Nice. Dude, I love me some ongoing jokes. Got to have an undead aquarium. Why? I don't have an answer as to why. Right, I feel like Ophelia's house is slightly larger than what I represented here. I think it's Orphea is her name. Yes. Uh, so Aboleths play a role in this campaign because when I came up with this setting as a young man I was obsessed with Aboleths so the cosmology is slightly different Aboleths descend from primordials uh, and there are still some of them who are uh, undead and alive and occasionally they have business in the city and they need a place to stay hence the aquarium which also doubles as an attraction so the, the Aboleth pay to stay in the aquarium and then people pay to come look at the Aboleths sometimes Yeah, many, many aquatic undead who require water to not fall apart. There's actually an underwater city. There's an underwater city called the Cyclopean City because it doesn't have a name because it's like a Cthulhu type situation uh, where many undead live. Or I guess not many, some. Definitely less in Necropolis, but an amount of undead live down there. 
You don't get you don't get hassled by ghouls and ghosts like you do in the wasteland, but you might get eaten by a giant undead sea creature, which. All right, let me see what else. Okay, that's all the things. Uh, got like 18 minutes left. I could probably establish where uh, some of the party members are living at. Little flop house situation over here. But yeah. Now I just gotta map out the rest of the city. Which is gonna be an undertaking. I guess I can get started on it. Let me save this. I actually have an old map. Never mind. I have an old map at home I can use. So I'll just use that. Nice. Yeah, I actually had an idea for a campaign kind of similar to that, where uh, the party gets goes through this dungeon that all of the traps and monsters have been like mysteriously removed. Now they get to the treasure hoard, and it's like an ancient red dragon, like a, something that cannot fight. And it's just like, oh good, someone finally showed up. I have a letter for you to deliver to my friend, an ancient blue dragon, who also has a dungeon, and it's warded against magical messaging and teleportation and all that shit. So I need you to hand deliver this letter to this other dragon because I'm trying to talk to him. Uh, so dungeon dungeon mail deliverers is like definitely a campaign I want to run at some point. But yeah. Yeah, this ended up looking pretty okay. I like it. I guess I should come up with some setting with some uh, aspects for it. It's fate. The system I'm running it in is... Oh, man. No. Have you ever played Fate? Do you know what Fate is? Two inch tall bar, like like a fairy bar inside of a regular bar. That sounds dope. So, Fate is part of your heritage, my son. It is one of the best RPGs ever made. Uh, you should definitely go check it out. It's 100% free on the internet. You can go read the, the whole SRD right now if you wanted to. Uh, it's F-A-T-E. And uh, it's got a bunch of a bunch of like groundbreaking RPG concepts that made their way into like every non-D&D RPG that got published in the last like 10 years. Oh, man. It's so good. Yeah, I'll let you in on a secret, Noah. I don't actually like D&D that much. <laughs> I know everybody plays it, and it's like the best D It's the best role-playing game to play if you want views on Twitch, for sure. But for me personally, I like much more narrative RPGs. What's another aspect here? I played D&D &D 5e in one session of 3.5. Well, at least you only played one session of 3.5. Ah, 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 ah. I mean, listen, 
There are people who like 3.5. I'm just not one of them. I wonder if I should make these letters a little bigger. I think that might help with the readability aspects. Yeah, 11.7 is way too small. Let's do like, uh, is 24 gonna be ginormous? Ah, no. And about 20. Still too big. 16? Eh, 12? All right, 12. 12 is good. Yeah, dude. Yeah, everyone is John is like a direct product of uh, the apocalypse. Well, I guess actually everyone is John came out before Apocalypse World. But uh, both of those games can trace their lineage back to fate one way or another. Uh, yeah. Not D&D &D RPG design. It's my favorite thing. Talk about this shit all day. But yeah, everyone is John is a classic. That's a that's a deep cut. I think it was one of the first um, like non D and D non. Uh, I think it was like one of the first RPGs that saw success on the internet before being published anywhere else. Like, I remember when people were talking about Everyone is John on, like, fucking 4chan, like, Reddit and shit, because it was such a simple game that it could be propagated through the internet. And people could just share it online and play it online, which was uh, kind of huge at the time. So, it was Everyone is John is, like, groundbreaking in its own way. Oh, I'm so glad this map is done. I feel like I'm going to add another another texture layer. Like a very light dusting. If I just take this texture layer outside and then drop it down one. Eh, it doesn't look good. I could probably make it transparent. A little transparent. Oh yeah. I mean, actually, technically, no. That's one of the few laws that uh, Necropolis has: is that free will is not for sale, uh, nor will it be abrogated by necromantic magic. So you're not allowed to enslave other undead. Uh, with magic or the threat of violence unless you are um part of the legion in which case you you can do that and also you kind of run the city through the threat of violence uh the the legion is basically the undead military force of necropolis they are responsible for making sure the walls don't get breached and also going out into the wasteland and bringing back stuff to eat uh so they're pretty hardcore and uh, typically they don't fuck around in the city. Except, like, basically, if the Legion shows up, you're in a lot of trouble because they don't care about whatever's happening here and they're just going to butcher everyone they can see until the riot stops, basically. Or the building's fire is put out or whatever. So, basically, the players are, like, in a Gangs of a New York-style situation, but if things get escalate to the point where, like, rioting or, like, fire is happening... Oh, yeah, everyone is undead. Everyone is undead. Full stop. You play as undead. Your fellow citizens are also undead. We've had all kinds of undead. We've had ghosts, poltergeists, uh, ghouls, zombies, skeletons. We've had several liches. Uh, Fate accelerated, a customized version. But, yeah, Fate is, like, the only game I know that could even run this. Because fate has this cool rule where you can write a sentence down about your character and it becomes true. Like, if I write on my sheet that I am a ghost, I can do all the things that you would reasonably, reasonably expect a ghost to be able to do. Like, that's just one of the rules of the game. I think I might take your advice on the beige here. 
maybe outside the city it's beige. It's like a dark brownish yellow, right? Little bit of texture. What if I just make it red? Like fuck it. Let's just do a visual metaphor. There we go. All right, it's done. I wonder if anybody bet on the prediction. I was not paying attention. Yeah, nobody bet on it. That's okay. We did do it though. Yeah, no, uh, Fade is super easy to learn. Basically, you can, you don't even have to know the rules. Like, you can just be like, I'm going to try to do this. <laughs> and the system will handle how that works mechanically in, like, one of four ways. And then you're good to go. Like, yeah, as long as it makes sense with what you've written on your character sheet, you can pretty much do whatever, which is why I use it because it's the only system that could handle something this crazy. Like if I was trying to run this in D and I'd have to stat up, uh, undead player races. And then maybe like some custom classes to rec represent the fact that, uh, magic is all fucked up because the necrotic plane door is still open. And, uh, the entire balance of arcane forces is heavily skewed towards death magic. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. So the game, yeah, I mean, basically there's a rule called the bogus rule where if somebody feels like what you're doing is like lame or not, like not in keeping with the spirit of the game that we have agreed to run, they can be like, that's bogus. And then you have to like come to a compromise that everyone is cool with. So if I was running my undead quest campaign, I'm like, everyone's undead. This is like a gothic horror slash survival slash post-apocalyptic campaign. And you're like, I want to be a sentient goldfish. I'd be like, bogus. Come up with come up with a cool undead NPC, please. Or if it was like three in the morning and I was drunk, I'd probably be like, cool. You're an undead sentient goldfish. Let's do it. But yeah, then you'd be able to do all the things a goldfish can do. And you would not be able to do all the things a goldfish would not be able to do, right? And there are no rules for that. It's just common sense. So if you're like, I want to lift these iron bars. I'm like, you're a goldfish. You can't do that. But if you want to swim through a sewer to like get somewhere, totally could. You're a goldfish. You're allowed to try that. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm telling you, man. The second you step outside of D&D. Yes, dude. Yes. It was worth it. I don't give a shit about the stream. If one person tries fate, mission accomplished. Tell your friends. Oh, man. Yay. Yeah, yeah. My friend got the gift that I bought for him. I'm excited. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's awesome. Well, you got one for sure. You got one invite to Undead Quest if and when it gets run. I'm actually, so do you think I should run it as a one shot for Nerdlandia? Because I've been thinking about it. I found an online program that runs Fate, uh, kind of like Roll20, but for Fate. And I'm thinking about maybe trying that. Hell yeah. Alright, I'm, I'm gonna go harass Cat about it at some point this evening. I think my time is done. Let me see.
Yeah, I'm about to clock out. I think there's only like two people on the stream, and I always feel I always feel bad raiding with only like two people. I try to have like at least five. So probably not going to be any raids. Uh, I don't even know if anyone's online anyway. Maybe if it's somebody, like, if I know it's somebody cool, I might run up. No, there's nobody here. Yeah, nobody nobody who I want to raid. Like, if, if Norlandia was live, I would raid them. Like, if Ladies of D&D &D was, was live, I'd raid them. Yo, Frank House is live? Is he live, though? I know he was live earlier today. Dude, how am I not following Frank House? Yeah, we run up on them with two people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll ask you later, man. Thanks for coming out. It was you made the stream a lot better by being here. 